Today we're going to be taking a look at custom Gantt tasks with RAD Gantt View. As a reminder, RAD Gantt View is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, we're going to take a look at implementing RAD Gantt View, and then we'll go ahead and create a custom Gantt task. This will allow us to hold some extra values in business logic to work with. And then we'll implement this custom Gantt task and look at how highlighting can work in a slightly different way with some custom business logic built in. Stepping into Visual Studio, we already have a project working here, and if any of you have been paying attention to the videos, this is actually the project from the previous Gantt View highlighting video. We're going to go and extend this with our custom task, and then work some new highlighting logic around some actual business logic for our custom Gantt task. As a quick review of what we've done here, we can see we have some row definitions, column definitions, Gantt View is being bound to tasks from our view model, visible range is a Gantt range, which we've set from February 1st to April 1st, Pixel length is bound to a rad slider that's farther down the page, which you can actually see right here. And the highlighted item source is going to highlight the tasks, which we're just randomly selecting from the parent and children combo. And last but not least, we have our toggle button, which actually toggles that highlighting effect, and it all works together pretty seamlessly. We'll go ahead and run it just so you can see the baseline that we're working from. So now we can see, we'll go ahead and play with our slider a little bit, set that pixel length up or down, and we hit the highlight toggle button and we can see one of our random collections has highlighted some items. So we do have some functionality working here, but we want to go ahead and enhance this in a more custom business logic type scenario. Now of course, one of the first things we're going to need to work with here is a custom Gantt task. We will go ahead and add a brand new class, and we'll call you Team Gantt Task. This is going to inherit from our default Gantt task. And we want to make sure that we have our constructors covering what we can do with a regular Gantt task. So we have public team Gantt task. And we know we want the overloaded one that handles the start, the end, and the title. So public Gantt task. We'll have date, time, start, date, date, time, end, date, and string, title. And then we go to base start date, end date, and title. So that's all out of the way, so now we can go ahead and add some custom values here. Since we're talking team with these Gantt tasks, there might be something like a team ID. Well, we can implement private int, int, not indexer, team ID, public int team ID with our getter and setter, and set if team ID not equal value not equal value team ID equals value and we do our type save property change this dot team ID we can also go ahead and add a lot of other custom properties to this but for right now all we need is this one to show you how you can use some custom business logic with your Gantt tasks and highlighting go ahead and save do a really quick build on this make sure team Gantt task is referenceable from the rest of our application. And then we step back into Gantt View. And we can see we already have tasks and highlighted tasks. Well, we'll go ahead, do a quick copy job on these, paste them in, and change them to Team Gantt Tasks. Team Gantt Task, copy that and place it, paste it here. And we'll throw the word Team around a little bit more to make it easier to distinguish these. Now, of course, we have this all set up. So we're going to have to go ahead and mess with our constructor a little bit. So instead of tasks and highlighted tasks, we want to work with our team tasks. Team, highlighted team. And of course, like I said, we're using team Gantt tasks here. Now load tasks, we'll just keep that intact. We'll instead add load team tasks. And the fun thing about load team tasks is that we can copy and paste load tasks into our brand new method called load team tasks. And of course, we have to go ahead and do a little bit more replacing here. But because it all works exactly the same, everywhere we see Gantt task, we do a quick replace and everything just magically works. Here we just have to make sure we do team tasks so we're adding the right thing. And the one last thing we really need to do is set our new property on the child Gantt tasks. So child GT dot team ID. And this one, I'm actually going to need a randomizer here. Throw it up above. New 
random. So we can say random.next 0 to 4. And I'm basically doing this so that we have teams that are kind of matching up to a 0 to 4 index. So next thing we want to do real quick, just so we don't forget, is make sure we have the right binding statements on our actual XAML page. So we can copy team tasks over here. Wait for everything to catch up. And we want to set this as binding to team tasks. Back to our view model. Highlighted team tasks. And that will be here. And now we just need to update our highlighting logic to work with our new highlighting task. So you can see we still have our team tasks, highlight team tasks. What we'll do in the check value, we can see this is toggle highlight check value. Once again, we'll do some creative copy and pasting. So scroll on down to toggle highlight. Make a toggle team highlight. Just so we can carry a lot of that logic over. And again, if it's null, we don't want to do anything. If it's true, we are going to have to work with highlight team tasks. And if it's false, we would just want to clear that collection. But all of this logic is about to go away. So what we actually want to do here is actually is really simple. We're going to set ourselves a counter, and this is just going to be team tasks, team tasks dot count. We use this for a for loop. I is going to be less than counter. And here we're just going to have a little bit of fun. So we say team gantt task tgt equals team tasks is going to be our iterator i. But taking a step back, if we want to pick a certain ID, why don't we utilize the selection that works within RadGant view? So we'll go all the way up here and add ourselves a brand new right past check value. We'll say private team Gantt task selected task and a public team Gantt task selected task. And as you would expect, the getter and the setter if select a task not equal value select task is in fact value and on property change this dot selected task we can go ahead throw a little bit of binding back in our main page once more say selected item we should be binding to our selected task. We know it's going to work, don't worry. And once you have that, we can build up a quick collection. And this is going to be teen kids equals TGT dot children of type team Gantt task. And we got a where x such that x dot team ID equals selected task dot team ID. So we have our quick collection. And then quick for each var team kid in team kids say highlighted team tasks dot add team kid so we're almost done we just want to make sure that we have our selected task oh, it's always an important one it's going to be mode two-way you always forget the two-way bindings until you go ahead and are about to run it in a video and then something goes wrong so now, go ahead and run this. Internet Explorer pops up. We have our same zoom, zooming behavior. We have all the scrolling through items. But now, if we select an item and toggle our toggle button, we can see all the other items from that selected items team. So as we go through, again, make this a little bit bigger of a view, all the items that we have that are for that team are highlighted now. And the neat thing is, as we go through and select different children, we can see all the items from their teams. So we have all this added functionality just by adding a single property to our brand new custom Gantt task and then modifying our highlighting logic a tiny bit. So I hope you've seen how quickly and easily you can create your own custom Gantt tasks using Rad Gantt View. I hope you've enjoyed this video series for Rad Gantt View and stay tuned for more in the XamilFlex Marathon as well as all the other great XamilFlex videos coming at you for the Telerik Rad Controls for Silverlight and Rad Controls for WPF. Stay tuned for more.